People want to make video games and they always need a game engine for that. But there's a question, can you make a game engine? Is it worth it? And I know it takes a lot of time. Like a real engine, for example, took 20 years of a big company to be done. But you know what else takes millions of dollars, a lot of people and years to be done? Well, games. Just like Grand Theft Auto V, who took five years and about a thousand employees. But we still make them in three days or even an hour. So that raises a question. Can you make a game engine as fast as you would do a game in a game jam? I mean, can you make a game engine in 30 hours? Well, I did this once and this video is exactly that, but on steroids. Something that I actually did in the past, two years ago, where I made a 3D game engine from the absolutely scratch in 30 hours. But I cheated a little bit that time because that engine who was 3D with physics engine and Python scripting and a bunch more was not released to public. So I decided to fix this problem this time. In this video, you will see myself doing an entire game engine from scratch in 30 hours, but this time releasing it to public. So you can download it and use it and see if that's actually possible to do amazing games using it. And since I already did a 3D game engine in 30 hours again, and my main game engine, which is Cave Engine, is also 3D, I decided to do a 2D game engine this time. So. This is the reason. And this is the time lapse showing everything, literally everything that I did from the first line of code. Like even before that, uh, you can see here in the video, I'm setting up the Visual Studio project. And as always, as I did in the previous time lapse, you can see in the bottom of this video, uh, all the timestamps of like when I was doing and what I was doing and kind of why I was doing everything. So you can follow along and pause the video if you want to read like what's going on because that are gonna give you like a great base on how a game engine is developed. And well, I have to say this is literally the, the second time that I do a game engine in such a short amount of time, 30 hours to be more precise. And well, I did had a lot more experience and it was like, way cooler and way more fun. But uh, the amount of stuff that I did in this engine compared to the first time is a little bit less, but it's at the same time more. And I will explain that in a second. So basically, uh, the first game engine was 3D, which is like more by default because like I had to write way more shaders, way more uh, logic to import 3D models and stuff like that. And in this engine, since it's 2D, I do not have to import models or write complicated shaders. Actually, the shaders in this engine were pretty simple. Um, so it's less things uh, to do when it comes to this. But since the first engine was not released to the public, I was not worrying a lot about about making it like uh, very well organized and something that I would actually uh, keep developing afterwards. So it was just a challenge and that's it. In this engine, I did have to worry a lot about that. So the structure and the code and how I was writing everything was very important to me uh, when it comes to that. Because, well, this is very important. I not only wanted to keep developing this engine and adding more things, more features and more support, meaning that the code will need to be very well organized, but I'm also planning to use this entire game engine as a base for a complete course on how to make game engines. Yes, you guys uh, have been asking me this a lot for a while, like how to get started, how to make this, how to write a code behind the scenes. So I wanted to do a very, very, very complete course. And I knew that I had to start from a basis because like what I see many people doing and what the first thing that came to my mind is, well, let me just hit record and do whatever I wanted to do and explain, but that will lead to a very unorganized and not very pleasant to watch course. And I don't like this idea. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something complete. And that's why I was thinking in this engine, this entire game engine was done in such a short amount of time, uh, not only for the challenge, but to provide a base for a complete course. In other words, this engine, like I would have time to think on it, to think the, the classes, the structure, how this uh, everything would work for then start making a complete course. 
And I have to say that this is a project that I've been thinking about doing for a long, a long time and I'm very excited that it's finally uh, starting to happen because now I have the game engine, people are using it and I will improve it a lot and then I will start recording all the courses. Of course, it's not cheap to produce something like that, it's going to take a lot of time because like it took me 30 hours to do this like alone. So imagine how many time it would take for me to plan each video, record, edit and publish. Even though I do have this now as a basis, it will take a while because I want to make sure that uh, you're not going to be wasting your time watching a bunch of uh, nonsense stuff and unplanned stuff. That's why this is very important to me. This process is very important. And a lot of people is asking me already uh, when this course is going to come up and how much it's going to cost. I haven't decided any of that yet, but what I do know is it will be released and we're gonna be amazing. But if you want to understand this, if you want to be part of this course, the first class that I'm gonna be releasing, I will leave the link in the description to a mailing list where you can put your email and I will notify you when this course gets done. It may take like one or two months for now yet, uh, depending on when you are watching this video. And don't worry, I'm not sending you spam or anything like that. I will just notify you when the course gets done, okay? So I'll leave the link in the description and I'm very, very excited about that, I have to say. And if you have any suggestion or, or anything that you want to do uh, or learn in this course, put it in the comments because I'm willing to help you and read everything, okay? So let's go back to this time lapse that it's been working, uh, it's been going here, and let's talk about the process of making this engine uh, in particular because it was very different and a lot more fun than the other for a very important reason. And first of all, I really like 3D games. It's like my main thing now, but I also love 2D games, especially how simple they are and make you focus on a great game mechanic and a good story and so on, but especially the mechanics. I don't know why, but 2D games have uh, used to have like uh, a good core mechanic that you can explore and do stuff like Braid. It's a very cool, cool game with a great mechanic and unique. And since it's simple, like 2D game is way more simple than a 3D, you can make it complicated, make it complex when it comes to the mechanics and the story. And I love that. So I always wanted to, to make 2D games, but well, I'm not very happy with the existing game engines. They always not enjoy me uh, in, in some way or, or other when it comes to 2D games. So I wanted to make my own using my own uh, mindset. What I would think that will benefit me as a game developer to make 2D games. I don't want to just download like Unity or Godot as good as they are and I know a lot of people love them but Myself as a developer, I do not. I just do not wanted to download it and start using it to to make my 2D games. I wanted something unique, something uh, special for my own taste that will like communicate to me as I wanted to. And that's exactly why I wanted to make this game engine in 2D as well. And of course, like I do have a 3D mainstream game engine right now, which is Cave. So I did not wanted to do another 3D engine. <laughs> and so it was very fun to do this thinking all the time about the games that I would be uh, using it to make because that gave me so many ideas on the design, the layout, like the layer system, which is something that I'm really, really proud of and the simplicity of the UI and the elements that really was like thinking to fit me in my game development um, experience. And something very important, and now this is like the main reason why this engine was so pleasant to do, is, um, well, I've been making games for a while, like game engines and games, of course, and when you start making game engines, you always want to like just copy an existing formula, like, uh, oh, Unity uses entity and component, and there's a scene, and the UI in Unity looks like that, and every game engine do have like a content browser or an asset browser or whatever you want to call it uh, that have folders and stuff so when you start making engines you kind of want to do the same thing as the other game engines so many game engines out there end up being just a clone of an existing engine and well it's honestly not a good clone it, end, it ends up being a bad clone and this engine I was 
very uh, like my mind was very free to think in different ways to do uh, everything of course it does have like scenes and it does have objects it does have components but honestly I I'm starting to think that it it was not necessary at all to have components especially in when it comes to entities and components because everyone seems to love adding this to the game engine and if you start researching you will find all sorts of crazy stuff like ACS and stuff like that and oh the entity is just an ID and the components like all the logic and all the behavior all the data should be in the components not in the entity and like well who said that? <laughs> Honestly, you can do whatever you want. It's your engine. If you want to do it differently, you can. And this engine, something that I'm really proud of is it does not uh, rely on inheritance a lot. It does have a, a little bit of inheritance, but uh, there's a game object class and that's it. And the game object class does have everything that a game object should have in this engine. It does have a transform. It is a transform, actually. Uh, it does have information on how it will be handled on screen. It does have like the sprite and the mesh and it does have physical information. And if I want to do any other stuff to the objects, I will probably just add to the game object itself, not to a component because like every single object does have a transform. Most of the object does have a mesh. Most of the object mo uh, does have uh, some sort of physics. So why make this like component stuff to make your life a little bit more complicated and add like inheritance to the game? Well, well it's, it's weird. It's no. And in this engine, there's like this clear separation. Everything that's core, it's part of the game object. And the components are literally only for the fight on scripting, like only to extend, to add like custom logic to the object. And again, as I said, I'm not sure if I need this. I can simply run the logic uh, in the start and in the update of the of the game object and just let the user write the Python script there. Like, you don't need components to do this, you know? So this freedom uh, really makes a lot of difference when it comes to like making your game engine like you you don't need to follow the strict rules that you see everywhere else and if you do follow you will only create another copy of a game engine not your own game engine not an exclusive and not a like a better engine it will just be another clone so having this freedom is really 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 important I want it to be simplistic and I wanted to be like in a way that I wanted to do and I was not uh, forcing myself to use those existing standard uh, constraints of a game engine so I was making it very very on my own like the way you import the images and you have the scenes well it's a list for the images and a list for the scenes and it, there's no like complexity when it comes to like a content browser and stuff like that especially because I wanted this engine from the beginning to be simple and lightweight like the file that you save the project in this engine it's not a folder full of crazy stuff as other engines are uh, it's a single file and it's super lightweight you can literally like send this over like whatsapp or a text message if you want uh, to share to a friend or, um, or stuff like that uh, of course you have like downsides of that especially when it comes to git because well it's impossible to version control uh, binary file but uh, as for personal project and for stuff that you want to have like uh, in your taskbar to open and make your own games as you want to well that really is cool and is something that I wanted to have for a while in my like uh, taskbar but I haven't and now I can have this because like I wrote this engine to fit my own taste and that's a good part of making a game engine slow so if you make your engine it's gonna be like yours of course you can share it to the public as I'm doing here uh, but it really fits your taste and that's like well breathtaking there's no uh, no such a thing as doing your own game using your own technology that fits your own taste that's very good and now being a little bit technical about the technical aspects of these engines, of course, uh, comparing this engine to the previous one, the previous challenge I did two years ago, I'm now way more experienced when it comes to UI and I'm GUI. Uh, so this UI and the usability in this engine in general 
is so much superior like it's way better you can download it and test it the only thing that uh, it's not it's a little bit annoying is that they did not implement a uh, point and click to select stuff objects in the viewport so that's kind of annoying but well I may add this in a future update um, but usability is so much cooler and since I have way more experience now the way I did the, the Python embedding this engine does have like Python scripting by default uh, was way better than actually Cave Engine, which is my mainstream game engine. Like this implementation is so much different, so much simple and better than, than I, the one that I, that I did for Cave. And I was using like the same libraries, which is Python and PyBind 11, but well, it's way better to, to write a code for it right now as it's in its current state. So I think the code in general was way more organized, I was able to understand like the bigger picture of the engine, what I was doing, what's left uh, to do, and how many time I had. Um, so that was very, very fun to follow along. And something that many people ask me is like, oh, this is a 2D game engine and how different or how easy or how harder uh, it is from a 3D game engine. And it's actually not that different. Honestly, if I wanted to port this engine to be 3D, it will not gonna take as much time as you may think because like even the transformation, like the transform, like the matrices and stuff like that, uh, that I did in this engine are literally the same. It's not similar. It's the same math uh, that you would do in a 3D engine. Of course, uh, the only difference here is that you are not gonna use the Z axis and you are not gonna rotate the objects in the X and Y axis, you, you only rotate in the Z axis. So this is the main difference, but all the rest, it's literally very similar. Uh, the shaders, like even the shaders, they are similar, but this is a 2D engine, so there's no like shading, physically based rendering and stuff like that. It's just the flat color. So because of that, the shaders are way smaller in size, but everything is there, like all the math and everything is there. And the only thing that there's no such a thing here in this engine, and I would have to add in a 3D engine, is the asset important to import like .blend files, FBX and stuff like that, because uh, in 2D it does not make sense. But it's not that different. And if you understand how to do a 2D engine, you will understand how to do a 3D engine for sure, because this is very, very, very similar. Oh, and of course, there's no depth test in this engine because like, it's 2D, uh, you don't need that. You can only uh, be as smart as sorting the objects that you want to draw and that's okay. Uh, but even like the ferret handling, like this engine does use off-screen buffers, which is like pretty cool for a 2D engine. Uh, so, oh, it's very cool to have this knowledge in mind and the chance to develop this is something really breathtaking. That's why I'm very excited about the course that I'm making uh, to teach you everything that you need to know to make a game engine. Even though if it's like the first time you have no previous experience with graphics, the course will fit your needs. So I'm very excited. And again, the link will be in the description as well as the link for you to download and test this game engine that I'm very excited to see what you will be able to do. And if you do something, or have any questions or feedbacks, please put in the Discord server of this channel because I will love to talk to you about it, okay? So that's it for this video. This was the time lapse uh, done in 33 and a half hour. And this is my new, uh, my new version of this challenge. And put in the comments as well if you want me to do another game engine challenge in the future, maybe like a community game engine challenge for everyone to try it out as well, or maybe uh, with a different engine type. Well, who knows? Put in the comments. My name is Guilherme. Thank you for watching this video and I see you in the next one.